Hello. Error here or audio? Yeah, okay. Hello. Everyone. Uh, this is uh, now Dr. Zia Ahmed available on live stream in order to teach my students of Masters in English. Uh, if Gulshir is available, uh, kindly Gulshir, uh, give your comment if everything is going on all right. If the sound is okay or uh, other things that will help me knowing that the thing is being received by you people. Okay, so uh, time is right now, let's have a start. Uh, in fact, uh, the chapter that we had started, that chapter uh, was uh, with the beginning of uh, Daru's arrival at the home of these people, his friends, as we talked about in the beginning, that he was uh, available at the home of Uzi and Muntaz and he was discussing certain things with them. Uh, we are not going to talk about these things that we had already discussed. I'm just trying to give a type of uh, review of the things. And besides that, if you remember, uh, we had also talked about uh, the mustache thing. I mean, the mushwala, which people discussed a lot in the classroom. I'm going to uh, take you from upward from that thing. Uh, when Daru had returned home, from there we are going to start with. Uh, he had returned home and he faces early in the morning when he goes to his bed and uh, gets up early in the morning he is there to uh, listen from his servant Manusi uh, as the title last time we also had Manusi is his servant uh, that Manusi for example wakes him up early in the morning and he uh, tells him that uh, the breakfast is ready uh, but because of his late getting up it's not possible for him to uh, you know, take the breakfast in a good way or to take the things in a normal way. Uh, he just uh, engulfs, washes his mouth and gets ready for his office. And I think everybody remembers that uh, uh, he was going to his bank, in fact. But because of uh, carelessness, he is unable to notice uh, that his car is having no petrol. So he will definitely face some of the issues. And from here, we are going to start as soon as he goes outside. Uh, so on page uh, 19 of the text, uh, if you see, we have the passage which begins with, I grab my briefcase. Uh, we are not going to read this passage, but first I need to talk about the dog, uh, the, the animal which is available on his way. And he tries to remove that animal also. Uh, it means that the trouble begins from the very right, from the beginning. As we say most of the time that the start of the day has not happened in the way as it should have happened. I mean, we try to declare that something bad omened, manhus or something like that. Same thing has happened with him. He removes the dog and after that he moves forward. Uh, let's see on page 20, there is a paragraph uh, if you people are noticing and opening your book with me. The digital book shows uh, 20 page. And if you are having a hard copy, maybe the same page, but the passage begins with, I drive fast. So I'm reading this passage with you, kindly follow with me the passage. Uh, it goes to say, I drive fast, belching up the taste of egg from time to time, and I'm thinking about an appointment. I have at 10, which I would rather not have at all. Still, I'm not happy when my car's engine dies on me, and a quick glance tells me that I am out of fuel. I try to make it to the next petrol pump on sheer momentum, but there is too much traffic, and I have to hit the brakes. I take off my jacket roll up my sleeves, open the doors and push with one hand uh, on the steering wheel until the car is by the side of the road. Uh, people uh, honk at me unnecessarily as they drive past and my white shirt is turning translucent in spots. So this is the passage that indicates first of all that there is very little petrol in this car and the hell of the matter is that you notice that. My point is that is it the carelessness of uh, Daru or it is the moneylessness of Daru because of which he is unable to notice whether the car is having the petrol or not. I must say that uh, both are the cases, that he is a lot careless as well and on the other hand he is uh, having less money in his pocket as well 
and because of that he possibly couldn't notice it and so uh, right now he's in a situation which is very much the situation on Pakistani roads that uh, there are many uh, types of vehicles going on and it's not possible most of the time to you know get your way and especially at, at the time when you have a problem on the road at that time the situation gets worse nobody cares for that same as the case with him that he's pushing his car a frequent scene uh, seen by us people for example sometimes we see that a motorbiker uh, he is trying to pull the bike on the road in an effort to bring the remaining drops of petrol in the tank uh, I think most of my students might have experienced this kind of situation uh, it's a funny thing on a bike but it's a car that's being pushed by Daru and Daru is uh, taking uh, everything you know uh, to the petrol pump to get the petrol if honking is unnecessarily going on and this honking is also particularly Pakistani feature uh, on the roads uh, I have listened and I have found that unnecessarily no one in Europe and America in the developed world honks the horn but here uh, we honk the horn again and again possibly because of uh, enjoying the kind of TT uh, or pan pan let's say uh, as most of the boys would uh, put their put the hands or the their thumbs on the horn button and go on with that this is the kind of funny thing we try to enjoy but this is uh, this is what is the condition of the traffic on the road so that is what goes to indicate the the situation of Pakistani roads for the common people and that Daru is going to highlight as well uh, the hot season is also indicated in this passage by by showing that his shirt was getting wet and it was getting sparse as well so his preparedness his freshness is diminishing before he reaches to his office as well so that is the first passage that we uh, wanted to discuss here uh, the question can be raised here whether it was the carelessness of Daru or it was the moneylessness of Daru that the situation has happened uh, I think in the end the students can raise the uh, points or comments about that or they can suggest their answer as well or try to give the answer in their assignments also uh, well I am seeing that there are large number of people who are uploading their comments also uh, in the end I would suggest uh, all of you to upload some of the questions so that we can have a debate about this question as well uh, after this page 20 uh, on the same page 20 if you notice we have three last lines of the page where you have a name radar I think we can reach it very closely to this uh, uh, this these lines this set of lines it says radar sees me and shakes his head radar's real name is Heather and his dream is to become a hostile takeover specialist on Wall Street he is the only man at, at our bank who wears suspenders now this is one of the new characters that Daru is initiating regarding to him Raider or uh, as he lovingly is called Raider his name is really Heather uh, he is the one who has you know uh, he's the one who is in love with Daru and he takes care of Daru and all the time asking and putting certain questions on Daru uh, this is what he does so that's why he's very close to him so we come to know that Daru is right now in the bank, uh, that bank where he's working, where he's being waited, where he got late for by at least one or two hours, and uh, now he has to face certain people there. It's later only who would give him a particular smiling face. Other than that, everybody will be definitely uh, having trouble with him. And so let's see what kind of trouble he faces. In order to check it, we need to uh, go to the next page 21. And if you see, there's a name uh, on page 21. I think everybody is able to find out. Uh, the name uh, that is Mr. G1. The type of name is suggestive of certain things. I mean, G1 in in the Saraiki area, especially, uh, that's a kind of classical traditional name, and that goes to suggest that these names are mostly of that of the you know rich big landlords. And uh, so we have this is uh, the kind of name which is reflective of the power and authority of the landlord. I'm sorry if one of you is sitting a landlord. I'm not uh, saying bad things about any landlord. It's the kind of thing we need to keep in our mind before we go further. Uh, actually, I would say that here in this page, the, uh, the struggle, the conflict uh, between the powerful corridors of Pakistan and the common people, that struggle that's going on in every society, that is uh, to be mentioned here. For example, Mr. Jeevan, uh, he is waiting for Daru that he should come and clear his check of so many dollars. Uh, but Daru is already late and he's having lots of trouble and that's why he couldn't do the the clarification or the clearing of the check so that the money could be uh, posted into the account of Mr. Jeevan and so Mr. Jeevan is uh, a lot unhappy and so is our hero unhappy 
that after facing all these situations, I mean, having bad stomach at night, having not good breakfast, and after that, moving up the dog from his way, and then uh, coming to the petrol pump by pushing his car in the hot summer season, and the honking of the cars, all have flared him up. But let's see whether he is naturally a flared up, angry young man, or these are the circumstances which have made him so. This is what we are going to talk about next in the in the next coming pages. What is the real situation, whether Daru's character is like that, or these are the circumstances which have made him so. So Mr. Jeevan is sitting on a seat and he's waiting for uh, Daru to come. And so as soon as uh, uh, he reaches there, he, he is going to face Mr. Jeevan and Mr. Jeevan puts him a question. Okay, if you have clarified my check or not. And at that time, Daru is there to say, perhaps not, it's not possible for him to do so, so earlier, so quickly. And Mr. Jeevan shows his power by telling him that he is the one who needs to do the things as he's instructed. Uh, but but Daru is feeling a little bit, uh, you know, upset about that. He doesn't want to give any space to this gentleman, but that gentleman is going to claim his space because the power which he builds in the bank. So that is why uh, this is the situation. And let's see what is the paragraph which goes to show the situation so come on page 23 of your book according to the digital book uh, have you read uh, page 23 i hope that some of you may point out that uh, you are on page 23 as well uh, see that at the end of page 23 we have a small passage which is uh, i told this boy to take care of the deposit personally this is the passage that i shall be reading for you and let's have a concentration on this passage I told this boy to take care of a deposit personally. Today, when I find out that he hasn't done so, he calls me a liar and says that I never told him to. He's rude to me. And when I tell him I won't stand for it, he raises his voice and tells me to take my business to another bank. My BM, BM is here, bank manager. My BM is looking at me with hard eyes. This is unacceptable, Mr. Shizad. So Mr. Shizad is facing now the bank manager and Mr. Jeevan. The bank manager, of course, is on the side of Mr. Jeevan. And he is least taking care of uh, Mr. Shizad, that possibly he was having some trouble in the morning. He's not trying to settle down the situation, calm down the situation, and rather he's pleasing Mr. Jeevan. And Mr. Jeevan also is complaining against him without realizing anything about him. Now his masla, his problem, his biggest issue of Mr. Jeevan is that he's not being given respect by Daru. He's not being, he, he's, he's unable to intimidate that Mr. Daru. And so he is raising his voice in the office of the bank manager. Possibly he wants some type of punishment. So that is the power which most of people wield in our society. And they show that power as well. And this is what the writer is trying to bring forth that if you are connected somehow with any corridors of power, maybe the landlord, maybe the feudalism, maybe the industrial feudalism, or uh, maybe any other thing uh, which is making us powerful, that goes to show us this type of behavior. And that's what Mr. Jeevan is showing. Now, if you see the bank manager and Mr. Jeevan have become one party and Daru is another party. Now, these two parties have a hell of difference. One is powerful person, one is independent person, one is having money, one is having power, another one is quite dependent. The case of being colonized and colonizer is also here. The case of being the people who are in the center and the people who are on the marginal edge, these, this is also present. And as this power will be exercised by the bank manager for the sake of that, Mr. Jeevan, it is the type of power which is exercised by all powerful people on those who are less powerful. So the society, the class struggle in the society that's also going on, after reading this paragraph, we can make a suggestion that ultimately Daru will be expelled out of the bank, even if he will be making a lot of requests to the bank manager, uh, in, because he doesn't want to lose his job in, in the society of Pakistan, losing of the job is a big trouble. So let's go down to the page, next page, 24. Uh, in that, we have one passage. Uh, on page 24, we have a passage. And this begins with, I have had a bad day. So students read that page, that passage. Uh, let me, uh, I will be answering these questions later on in the end. And first, let me complete the chapter so that the time may be valued rightly. Uh, you people may be noting down your questions and putting on the comments and I shall be answering or trying to discuss with you people all. Okay, uh, read, let's read this passage. It is on page 24 in the almost uh, center of the page. I have had a bad day, a bad month actually, 
and there is only so much nonsense a self-respecting fellow can be expected to take from these megalomaniacs. So I say it, this is a bank, not your servant quarter, Mr. Jeevan. If you want better service, maybe you ought to learn some manners. That's a kind of challenge which Dalu is offering to this Mr. Jeevan, so powerful a person, because he's holding a big account in the bank, and if he removes the account, possibly there may be a trouble for the bank. So bank manager is on the side of uh, this Mr. Jeevan. But Daru being a person who has his own voice and he wants to raise it as well, he challenges his authority by saying that it's not his house, it's not his, uh, it's not his haveli, it's not his quarters. If he's in the bank, he wants to get the things done, then he needs definitely to uh, take some etiquette. But this is a very bitter comment on this Mr. G1 and it's not possible for him to tolerate that because such people are always obeyed, they are never challenged. It's a kind of challenging of the authority and definitely the authority will be booming back to Mr. Daru and let's see. So now see, uh, Daru's characteristic comes before us that he's not afraid of these people. He is thinking that he has to, you know, say something which he wants to say. In that is a powerful character, but he does not possibly know what is the outcome of that or how the society will treat like that. So go on to page uh, 26. And in, on page 26, we have some lines and the lines will start with, I raise my head and then the lines will end at, no, Mr. Shizad, please leave. Uh, let me have a reading of these lines for you. Uh, I raise my head, it's my BM, I mean the bank manager. There is a security guard beside him. Yes, sir. You are fired, Mr. Shizad. But you see, sir, I'm really very sorry. Don't fire me. I shall work a month without pay. You have a serious psychological problem, Mr. Shizad. Your severance pay will be sent to your home by registered post. You need to stop crying, collect your personal items and go home. Uh, do you want me to fill out some form? No, Mr. Shizad, please leave. So that is the kind of hiring and firing thing which goes on with the modern corporate system uh, where people would like to you know, exercise their authority and power. And here, as we have seen in the last pages, that Mr. Bank Manager, who is addressed here as BM, that is going to take the side of Mr. Jeevan and is going to fire and practically firing has been fulfilled and Mr. Shizad is to be pulled out of the bank with the help of the guard. So the bank where he was an officer just a few moments ago and the same bank uh, guards are going to pull him out. This is what happens when you are not that powerful as other people are that the same house, the same place can pull you out. So that is the necessary outcome of challenging of the authority of Mr. Jeevan. So the question is, uh, is it possible in Pakistan to challenge the authority of anyone or the people who are in authority? They would take a considerate view. They would like to give space to the people who are working with them, under them. It doesn't happen actually. And that is what Mohsen Hamid is trying to point out in this uh, novel again and again, the kind of uh, problem that we have most of the time. So let's go forward on the next page. I have selected page 27. Uh, where a little bit of shift will take place after the expulsion of Daru from his bank. Uh, let's see here on page 28. I just want to talk to you people only one sentence and that is if you reach the page 28, uh, uh, he's wearing the black dress and Mumtaz with her husband arrives at his home and she's also wearing the black dress and a very historical, traditional sentence is spoken by Uzi or Angzeb, the husband of Mumtaz, says that you two match. Uzi says meaning Mumtaz and me. And that's where the sentence is a kind of foretelling. It's a kind of thing which is going to happen. Just in the uh, novel as for example, uh, the, uh, the Mill of the Floss, uh, the mother of Maggie has been pointing out again and again that Maggie is going to drown herself in someday in the river and the ultimate end happens the same. And here also when Uzi tells Muntaz and Daru that they are both in black clothes and therefore they, they match very well and possibly this is the anticipation that in future these two people are going to match, not Uzi himself. He, he may not be that matchful as Daru is going to be. So the writer has very deftly and very cleverly pointed out to the thing which is going to happen uh, in, in, in future as well. Uh, these things are talked by Muntaz again and again and then they pass on certain red lights as well, certain roads as well and there Uzi is not observing any, any kind of indications, red lights or the, any uh, rules of the road and 
and they are all thinking that the roads and the rules are not that much important for them because they belong to such a class, the powerful class. And again and again, therefore, the writer is referring to the class differences which are present between the rich class people or the upper class people and the lower class people. By the way, uh, they are driving 82 uh, Corolla, uh, which possibly nobody would like to have now. It's so old, but somehow it was a time when 82 Corolla was used to be the very big and very beautiful car. It was a status symbol, but now it's not, it's gone old, and that's the problem with the machine most of the time. So that was a corollary. Let's proceed on, go on further on next coming pages. Uh, the, the, let's leave this Uzi or uh, on the side and uh, let's see how Raider, the same Raider who appeared in some last pages, he talks and discusses and throws a lot of light on the character of Daru. So for this purpose, come on page 31. The page 31 of the same book, of the same chapter, the same chapter is going on. Uh, on this page, we have one sentence and that goes to throw a lot of light on the character of Daru. And that can be used as a type of quote, as a type of reference to show what type of uh, person Daru's character is there or what type of character delineation has been made by, uh, by Mohsen Hamid about his character. If you have reached the page 31, let me read the line for you. It's in the middle uh, where thanks I say but I can't in the time. Now the line follows, I want to talk to you people and that is just call Raider says, suddenly sad, the bank will be boring without you, all workers, bees, all worker bees, and no boss. So in that way, Raider divides the people into, uh, into uh, well, he, uh, uh, you see that here is something which is uh, dividing the bank workers into two groups, and uh, one group is certainly, as you have noticed, the group of bees, and the other group is the wasp. The wasp is stingy and it can bite, it can sting and it can cause trouble. It is therefore having some, its, some of its own power and the same thing possibly uh, has been pointed out by Rader by saying that okay everyone is like a bee. Now I think that bees are also you know uh, stingy, they can also be problematic as far as the wasp is concerned. But in case of the bees, they follow their type of group and they uh, follow each other and possibly they are going behind in a group and so therefore similarity, homogeneity is available among the bees but in case of wasp it uh, goes on alone, uh, flies alone or, or stings alone. So in, in that way Daru's character is being highlighted by using these two symbols, bees and wasp, very important. Uh, so in that way, uh, as Mr. Mahmood is pointing out, he says that bees and wasps are there. And so Daru is a wasp. He is not a bee. And from here, uh, we can talk about his character, that his character is like that. That he's individual, having his own characteristics. And perhaps he's challenging as well. And this is what uh, proves his character, shows his character that, uh, but you know, this is the problem. With all of us, for example, any one of you, maybe Gulshir or maybe Vakas or maybe some other dear student. If he's like Vasp, I think he will be noticed and definitely sometime he'll be punished as well. So uh, the people who keep the normal profile, they're not noted. But Daru is a person who will be noted. And that's the type of situation uh, which is having, uh, you know, problem with him. And he will be therefore uh, emerging up as a person who is to be noticed. But so far, he is to be thrown out of the bank and he is now jobless as well. And what other things he will be trying to do. Let's see by moving on to the next paragraph. Now in the same party, on the same page possibly, the last paragraph, let's notice the last paragraph. In the same party where he meets Raider and the thing of wasp and bees is talked about, there also we have another character, Nadira. And that's the, you know, another, another female character. Besides Mantas, we have Nadira as well. And Nadira is the person who is long known to Daru. For example, let's have a reading of this passage. I see Nadira glaring in my direction as she dances with some guy whose wet shirt sticks to his back, keeping her eyes fixed on mine. She pulls closer to him and grinds her body against his, running her hands up his thighs. I have never understood why she does this to me. Since she's the one who ended it, as usual, I try to ignore her. Now, Nadira is the past of Daru. Possibly before the arrival of Mumtaz, Nadira was the friend and now he doesn't want to be anymore with Nadra as a friend. He wants to be with Muntaz. And, and he doesn't possibly like uh, because the breakage has taken place. 
So the novel has a romantic touch as well, attaching with the female uh, friends and then detaching from them. That's also the normal uh, trend uh, these days of the 21st century. But the story goes back to 2001 and Lahore, therefore, is the Lahore where such things were happening even in 2001 as well. So this is what uh, is another character, Nadra, reflecting on the past of Daru and showing that Daru is also the type of person who can have changes, who can have different lifestyles depending on the thing which he's doing or whatever he's doing. So uh, that was what I could say about Nadra. This is just for the sake of objective, for the sake of any short question. Uh, possibly Nadra's character is not going to be that important that we may be uh, discussing it in detail. So that's what is happening in this chapter. A few of the more things will come in this chapter, but they are not that much important. And in that way, uh, we are reaching very fastly down the lane of the close of uh, uh, this chapter. I hope that three important things we have uh, talked about, and next time we shall be talking about uh, chapter four of the same book. But I may be summarizing by saying that we have uh, discussed mainly Daru's character, how much important this character is going to be and how much he is significant with respect to his uh, dealing with the people and how much stingy like the wasp is going to be and how much naturally he's powerful. These are the things we have talked about him. And these make him significant like a protagonist in the story. He's not a protagonist who is chocolate hero, like anyone very soft, but he's the one who is truly adjustable in Pakistani society. So now uh, I would request you people for the next 15 minutes to raise your questions so that I may be answering uh, or uh, give your suggestions as well. For example, I am reading one of the comment given by Jida Zahra. Wasp is lazy, that's why compared to Daru. It's a very funny thing, of course, because some of the people may be thinking in these terms that Wasp is lazy, yellow in color, and possibly it's because of this that the, that the Daru is being compared to that. But the wasp can be brown as well, and that wasp definitely can be very dangerous as well. Whatever the case may be, wasps are more dangerous. They, but not in the sense that uh, the bees may be more dangerous, but they are in group. My purpose is to say the individuality or the singularity or the uh, self-determination that is the one he will be able to do the things. So that is why uh, uh, he's being compared to the wasp. Maybe the element of laziness, but more so, it is the individual working which has become important. Uh, the second question Goldshare is raising, it says that, is Daru a fool or a bold character? Right, that's a very interesting uh, question indeed. I believe that Daru is not a foolish or a stupid character. He's the one who is more suitable in this Pakistani society. Because in order to get your right in Pakistani society, you need to be powerful, or at least you should, you should show that you are powerful. Otherwise, people will not be giving you your right. Yes, in, in a way, when he was losing his job at that time, you could say that he could have cooperated. But then, our protagonist is a person who's a wasp, who has got some guts in him, and these guts uh, force him to show his power and willfulness upon the people. He cannot be taken so softly, so easily, a tough guy and that toughness makes him successful in Pakistani society. Uh, he's got the friends but he's got more the power in him and because of which he's more successful in the lower class people, middle class people as well as in the upper class people. Okay, so let's talk about uh, Mr. Vakas's comment. It says that respected sir, my question is that when Daru was sent out from the bank, what was the reaction I am Vakas? So Mr. Bagas, uh, when Daru is pulled out of the bank, forcefully rather, he doesn't go with his own will and wish he's pulled out of that. Uh, his feelings are really very bad because, you know, it is the money which makes the things go, and especially in the society which is in Lahore, which we call sometime mini America. Money is needed there because of the materialism. Even if you have to make a call or you need to take a lunch or you want to uh, enjoy the place for a drink, or you want to travel on the road, everywhere money is required. Even the police people, as the mustache incident we read in the class, that goes to indicate that even here, a type of money is required. So the losing of the job means getting no money and, and having no source of money. 
He's a, he doesn't have any other source of money. He's got the servant, he's got the food to take, he's got many things to do without money that cannot happen. So that is why it is the problem now for him. He's thinking what will happen with him. But still, he is constantly thinking but never goes back to get the forgiveness of the manager or that of Mr. Jeevan. This is the strength of the character of Mr. Dharma. Right? Uh, next, uh, I will take up uh, Rida Zahra's comment once again. It says, sir, can we consider Daru as a tragic hero, maybe as uh, his own choice and decisions are responsible? Yes, of course. Uh, even if a tragic hero, the word hero is there. Because of the nature of being hero, it is the hero who suffers more. It is the person, powerful person uh, in any way, maybe physically or mentally, that person suffers. But this question, we shall be settling at that time when we have, we have read almost the whole novel. Uh, right now I want to concentrate only on this chapter and here he has shown his you know, strength of character, that he needs the people to be civilized before him when he is with them. And he also shows that he can survive even if he is thrown out of the bank as well. So coming to question two by Gulshir, if he is tough then why he begged the BM to stay in the bank? Interesting. That's very great. You know, uh, even if we are tough, we need certain sources to live in this world. As I already pointed out, money is the more important thing or the most important thing. Uh, the earning of that money is necessary. So the protocol of being the subordinate to the bank manager, uh, that suggested possibly if he talks to his colleague, the BM, uh, in a respectful way and tries to prove that uh, maybe uh, the job is restored or Mr. Jeevan is not giving given that much importance, he's given more importance, a colleague is given more importance, possibly the matter is resolved. So on the one hand, the financial problem is there. But on the other hand, the writer himself is present, who wants to say that before power, the request of anyone is unimportant. May he be a good person, may he be a diligent and honest person, he has to be thrown out if the power is angry with that person, all right? Uh, then I have, uh, Akhtar, what type of question asked by examiner, uh, character of Jeevan, discuss in uh, two seconds. All right. Uh, in fact, character of Jeevan will not be discussed, only Daru's character will be discussed. But uh, Jeevan can be taken as a symbol of power in Pakistan. I mean, the people who wield power, they show their power. And they are the group which is power. And they will not let anyone enter into that. Uh, unless that person also becomes powerful. So that is why Mr. Jeevan is taken in the sense of the power of Pakistan, right? Uh, I'm, I'm going to take one more question. Okay, three, four more questions will be taken and after that we shall have to call it a day. Uh, we may be joining once again in some other day by proper planning that uh, you people are present with me as maximum possible. Uh, do not forget to ask me the assignment after attending this lecture, okay? Uh, so I'm going to take Sheikh Tala's question. Uh, Sheikh is very generous in asking the question, you know. So like Daru's type, people can survive in our society in front of powerful people. If not, so where is the, where is the law? My goodness, if you ask me to talk about the law and this, uh, this is all going live and law enforcement authorities may come and arrest me as well, then I'm going to cut a joke of the law. But what I should say is that law has always been there. Law was always there. But uh, I, if I may ask all of you, where was the justice? Was it always there? And if you answer it rightly, you get the answer. Let's not talk more things about the law. And after that, yes, Omaya's question is there. Why bank manager does not defend Daru? It's again the power struggle. The bank manager needs to run the bank. His job is because of that. So morals, manners, everything is set aside. If the big account is pulled out of the bank, then it is the problem with the manager that he may lose his job. So. Everyone secures one's own insecurity and that is why he's not ready to take care or take sides with the Daru, but rather he will take side with the person who's powerful and the bank is running because of these powerful people. So that is once again the struggle of the power with the power, not against the power, rather against the powerless people. Uh, <laughs> assignment has to be there, you know, Mr. Gulshir, but it's not that big assignment, you know. Just one question is there and that question is, what major, uh, please note everybody, what major uh, characteristics of Daru are highlighted in the chapter that we have discussed. Uh, so this question may be prepared by three, four students and they may share with each other on WhatsApp 
I just want to see that the question has been prepared and that has been shared as well. All right. Uh, any other thing anybody wants to suggest? If you suggest in the comment, I may be repeating there. All right. Uh, I'm not finding, uh, perhaps the comment is not coming up from Muniba. Uh, perhaps she's not present there. It's Simon Zara. Sir, what is the importance of money in our society? Saima. So Saima asks, what's the importance of money? Saima, uh, let's talk first of all the things with reference to, you know, the novel that we are reading. Uh, more so if you take care of the society in general. I just ask you a question. Are you able to travel from your home to college without money? Are you able to get food without money? Are you able to get admission this college without money? Are you able to go to any uh, party without money? So money is everywhere and that is why money has become so important. It's because of the corporate culture, it's because of the materialistic culture, it's because of the class differences that money has become so much important. So it's not possible to do without money, money is important and one needs to secure at least the needful money as uh, you know, being a professor even I have to take care that the money should continuously flow in so that my job, my, my all these kind of things may continue. Okay and it's uh, Golshir says that you have to use my, okay next time. A better mic so everybody I hope you have enjoyed do not fail to give more comments and I hope that something has been understood uh, by my students and I think if the class is not there it's not taking place even then we are able to discuss certain things once you do the assignment after that we shall arrange the next next part of uh, our discussions so thank you very much everybody I am expecting the good assignment good comments from you people it was so nice for me to be in touch with my students, even it may be virtually, not physically, uh, but still it has done something, okay? Uh, Gulshar is saying something very briefly. Uh, is he in the jail or the first part of the novel is the ending scene? In fact, it's the, you know, the, the story which is in fragmentation as you see most of the time Mohsen Hamid's novels are in fragmentation. Start was done with the, uh, with the jail. And the jail scene comes at that time when you see uh, the, the boy was hit, the boy was killed and that happens in the middle of the story. There are many reasons why he has reached there before that a lot of things will be talked about and after that we shall reach to the very point where the boy is killed. Okay. So thank you everybody. I'm going off now, offline now. You can keep on commenting maybe uh, here or on Facebook, wherever. Uh, please do not fail to give your uh, comments on Facebook as well about this lecture. Uh, possibly some other people may come to know and join us in our lectures as well. I shall be holding some other lectures too for some other classes and if you people are interested you can again go live. Uh, I shall be noticing on Facebook also for any of my activities which is coming up. So thank you very much. I'm uh, going off now. Once again very much thank you all of you.